uh, BBC Six. But that's not going to help me with my uh, pursuit of voiceover work, is it? I do apologise. Let me start again. Phantom Limb from The Shins, available now to download from iTunes and other MP3 sites. It's the Steve Show, BBC Six, <laughs> with me. Uh, I just find that very difficult. It's got lots of S's and um, whatnot in it, which is difficult for a man from the West Country, because we do not like to open our mouths wide enough. We are quite a lazy bunch down there. Like that. We prefer to just sort of mutter it out the uh, side of our mouths. A man who speaks super posh, of course, Rufus. <laughs> Uh, maybe I should get you from now on to do uh, to do all the Steve Show uh, name checks. Well, I've been uh, auditioning secretly to be the continuity announcer on the Steve Show. And just go, that was a Jin's Phantom Limb, and then back announce wrongly the uh, release date. Yes, exactly. Yeah. People can look forward to that one coming out soon. Mm. Um, while uh, we've been listening to the record, of course, you've been still talking about um, alpaca wool. Mm-hmm. Quite the obsessive about the alpacas. This is yeah. going to last what another twenty four hours? Then you'll forget all about them. Uh, <laughs> no, because I, I, I enjoyed my time. So it's this beautiful house in Cumbria. I cannot tell you what a lovely week. Kind of had. My, my friend's also got five Cocker Spaniels. Sure. If you've interacted with Cocker Spaniels before, you'll know how much fun they are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, he's invited me up to do maybe a bit of hay baling or some tree planting or just some general alpaca shearing and feeding. And I'm up for it. So no, I'm not going to forget my alpaca experience. <laughs> um, and uh, while you've been having such a sophisticated weekend, mm. we've already discovered that Sammy has been, uh, what, barroom fighting? I had a mild altercation, yes. This sounds extraordinary. You were defending your father's honour? Yes. Surely there's none left. <laughs> <gasps> no, I say that only because of the various notorious stories you've told us uh, on and off air. Well, I need to de- defend that very last shred. And okay. I'd be left a husk of a man. <laughs> um, we went to see Alabama 3, who were incredible live. Uh-huh. And we were right at the front, right against the metal bar at the front. I was wearing my big shoes so my boobs weren't crushed. I'd had everything planned. Good. Um, and right to Two uses of the word boobs on today's show. We've had a boobies and a boobs. That's right. Thank so I think we're just a nice bit of variation yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there was this large fellow behind my dad who kept Ooh. shoving him in the back. My dad was like, it's a gig, this happens. And he turned around and realised, no one was shoving the large man. The large man just kept shoving him. And my dad turned around and went, mate, stop it. You know, there's just no need. Sure. So this bloke got like a sick, twisted grin and just kept doing it and kept doing it and kept doing it until the very end where I think he reached out towards the stage or something happened. And my dad turned around and I don't know if he grabbed him or shouted in his face or basically told him to, to desist immediately sure. or there would be consequence. But not necessarily using that language. Maybe not so much. Um, so his friend who we were with dragged him away. And then this bloke kept coming towards him and I said to him, Look, mate, don't bother because he'll rip you in two. I've seen it happen. Just <laughs> just don't bother. Wow. And then uh, after uh, coming, him coming forwards a few times and me kind of, you know, reiterating, don't bother, it's not worth it. He shoved me against the metal fence. Whoa! Slow down. Ooh. No one pushes Sammy in the corner. Uh, they certainly don't. <laughs> so uh, with an aching kidney, I, uh, I went back to him and said, right, You've crossed a line. If me dad's seen that, you'd, you'd better be written too. Basically, yes. You've already said that, yeah. You're, you're a rather large gentleman. Again, not the words, exact words I was using. Um, desist uh, or, or leave, basically. And he didn't listen. He came at me again. So with all my force, I shoved him onto the. Well, I tried to shove him onto the floor. His friends laughed, left him, and then I went to the security guard, pulled a whingy face, and went, "He's just trying to get me. Can you throw him out?" And they did. Oh, hey. well done. You see, what's so beautiful there is you began with the threat of violence, but in the end you used the old ladies' trick mm. of crying and looking uh, vulnerable. Well, I, I was... It's one It's one I always employ, <laughs> as you point out, in any pub uh, it's, uh, situation. Another good one, ladies. Can't get on a pack train. Pretend to be pregnant. Um, anyway, yeah, it, it works every time. But yeah, I was really upset because I didn't want to see my... My dad actually calmed down really quickly and I lost my temper quicker than him and it seemed sure. to have some sort of weird role reversal. But the, the thought that kept flashing through my mind was if I headbutt him, I'll be able to smash his glasses into his eyes. And that frightened me. Oh, the fact yeah. that you were even having such exactly. Hulk-like I, ideas. I was never going to do it, but that was kept coming through my mind and I felt horrible so I think I'm going to look into some sort of anger management It's interesting you say that because when I used to live in Coventry which and there are certain parts of Coventry obviously which are grim and there's other parts which are really really grim <laughs> and I lived in one of the grimmest <laughs> and I used to have to walk across a dark park to get uh, into the centre of Coventry and I used to I took to carrying because I was a bit nervous I took to carrying a, uh, um, a sort of pen knife with one of those kind of corkscrew bits and I'd have the corkscrew bit between my fingers <laughs> so I was thinking if anyone attacked me a little corkscrew in the ear or the head you know I know and the terrible thing is the more that you you 
you start walking around with that in your head, the more you're waiting for someone to attack you, <laughs> just so you can test out the corkscrew idea. And it's terrible, it's easy, you know, if you put yourself in those uh, violent situations, or even if your mind starts working in that way, you suddenly want someone to push you just too far. <laughs> so you can snap, it's terrible, it's so you can, it's, I'm, I'm always fascinated by the fact that there's a violence just, just mm. beneath the surface of everyone. I mean, sadly, I've never got into a fight, obviously, because people would just hit my glasses into my <laughs> eyes, eyes, as you predicted. I remember once I did judo, and the, uh, the the judo master, I was doing it for a little while, and I heard the judo master saying to one of the other kids, just knock his glasses off, you won't be able to do anything. <laughs> oh, no. I know. Terrible, isn't it? I thought, I'm sure that's not the way, is it? You're supposed to t teach me all throws and tosses and whatnot. But no, they were aiming for the glasses. So um, you didn't actually uh, throw any punches? I didn't, know, and I, I, I wouldn't. It's a stupid situation to get yourself in when you're a small female. I'm a three gig, uh, which I just imagine that, uh, that tune from The Sopranos <laughs> just playing throughout this whole... Uh, this whole confrontation. It, yeah, it was it was slightly surreal but great. Also on the same day that I was accepted onto a dental medical trial. A dental medical trial. Yeah. I look for, forward for to stories from that. <laughs> who knows what we're gonna? Who, who knows you're gonna, who you're gonna encounter at the? Uh, I said I can keep my tooth. That's the Detroit Cobras, who are a uh, covers band that only really cover old, sort of often obscure 50s and 60s uh, rock and roll and Motown and R&B and stuff. And that's from an EP called Seven Easy Pieces that was put out in uh, 2004, but I think they're also still recording stuff. And uh, we've had a, a text here from Matt Healy in Huddersfield who says, uh, Hello, first time I listen to the show, it's Ace, obviously, uh, exposing me to lots of cool music. Can you play me a Neil Young track? Well, often we will play Neil Young, but uh, if you want to recommend particular tunes, the way to do it is to get onto the website and uh, you can make a suggestion to us. We're always inviting uh, you, the listeners, to contribute music to the show, stuff which perhaps I'm not familiar with or might uh, tickle my taste buds or whatnot. And uh, one of the people who's done that is a gentleman who's on the line now. It's Christopher. Chris, are you there? I am. Hello. Hello there. I've already presumed I can call you Chris. Um, yeah, is that okay? why not? Of course why you not? can. Call me, uh, call me Stephen. Um, okay, Steve. uh, well, I never, I never said Steve. Steve. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Steve makes me sound like a scaffolder. Um, Stephen makes me sound perhaps a little bit like Stephen Hawking or Stephen Fry. <laughs> no problem. Uh, that's what I always go for. Now, um, all I've got a little bit of information about you. It says that you're a project manager specialising in refrigeration. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Um, yep. Now, how does that one? How does one specialise in refrigeration? You, you had a choice of a number of white goods. You went specifically for fridges. Um, it's more. Um, in building services, so in the construction industry. So right. Kind of ret retail and convenience stores and supermarkets and glamorous You've, things like that. Yeah, I, 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 I don't understand such things. I don't, basically, I don't understand a proper day's work. No. Um, well, someone's got to keep the milk cold, Steve. This is true. Thank you very much yeah. indeed. I don't know how they did it in olden times. Probably didn't, uh, did they? Didn't it just came straight from the cow? Drink uh, it quickly, I think. Straight yeah. into, yeah, straight into the gob. Well done. Well, we've established that. And so, well, are you, you're into music, you're into new music. Yep, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And uh, how do you seek out new music? I'm always fascinated to find out, um, because we've been talking about the blogs. Are you on the website? Are you endlessly scouring the web for music? Um, yeah, I do read um, particular websites that I've written about prior favourites. Um, to be honest, I talk to record shop staff as well. And, do you? Uh, or shout to club DJs in the clubs when I hear a good record. Or really, see, I've I've always yeah. been one of those people too intimidated to uh, to talk to the guys in particularly independent record shops. I do not have the nerve to go up to those guys. But you, you you're one of the, you're one of those people that I always see stood at the desk just having a chit chat. Uh, I know what you mean. Though sometimes I think they you think well are they going to think I'm stupid? But no, I mean they've got a lot of them are really friendly and they, they know so much about it. So it's just tapping into that, you know. And you sometimes shout to DJs in clubs. What was well, that? Only because only you can't talk to them because the music's so loud. Of course. <laughs> and you say what? And they're always happy to tell you what the tune is. Uh, yeah, mostly, yeah, yeah. Wow. No one's ever done that on the few occasions I've DJed at weddings. <laughs> No one, maybe well, I guess every, that, everyone always knows uh, Love Shack and Come and Eileen. They don't need to find out <laughs> what that <laughs> track is. Yeah. So, uh, what tune are you going to introduce to us this week? Uh, it's a track called Change Channel by a band called Lo-Fi Funk. Right. But funk is spelled F-N-K. Okay. They're Swedish, so... Sure, they can do what they want. Yeah. And, um, and uh, any particular reason you've chosen this one? Um, yeah, last week you said you really liked the Hot Trip track. Oh, um, I thought it was brilliant. Shake Your Fist, is it? Yeah. Um, Moshi Moshi Records released, his, released Hot Chip's first album, and they, they've also signed Lo-Fi, FNK, or Funk. Sure. So, yeah, same record label, good good, uh, good music. Let's hear it, and uh, we'll cast our verdict after we've heard it. Okay, cool. Stay there, Chris. Band is Lo-Fi Funk, and uh, the tune was Change Channel. It's the choice of uh, our caller, Chris. Uh, Chris, you still there? I am. I thought that was absolute dynamite. Good. I thought that's exactly the sort of thing that I want people to recommend it to me. You heard a tune last week that I enjoyed, you've come in with something else. I find it very hard to source good electronica and technoid music, yeah, yeah, but you've yeah. done it exactly for me. And uh, you mentioned they were on the Moshi Moshi label, is that right? 
that's right. Yeah. Now, uh, interestingly, one of the uh, the choices we had in the pigeonhole earlier, the Slow Club, which was the band with uh, the sort of kind of English folk, white stripes kind of feel, um, with the woman who stands up and drums and sings. They're also yeah. on the Moshi Moshi label, so it's interesting to see that they're doing uh, quite an eclectic uh, range of music. Yeah, I think they were. They released uh, the first block party as well. They've got quite Did they a lot really? On there. So they got quite a uh, quite a backup. There'll be people on the blog there and the webs annoyed that I've not I'm not fully au fait with every single moshi moshi track that's ever been released in the catalogue numbers. But uh, <laughs> there we are. You know, it's all about discovering music in your own way. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Chris. I really appreciate that choice. That was great. No problem. I'm pleased you like it. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks for getting in touch. No problem. If you want to uh, recommend a tune, uh, then you can get in touch uh, via the website. Uh, Rufus, uh, do you remember the web address using uh, your uh, RP voice? It's www.bbc.co.uk forward slash six music. Click on Stephen's face. Thank you very much indeed. That's exactly what you must do. Um, the time is almost uh, up for us on this Steve show. So, Vic, you have been here, you are a web guru, final tune from you, and uh, what have you sourced? Well, bizarrely, um, and completely coincidentally, it's more Swedish electro-nerd pop. <laughs> wow! Um, what are the odds? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this time sung in native Swedish. Thank um, God. The title is Det Snura Imin Skal, which um, means, I think it's translated as My Head is Spinning. Right. So it's nice to know that Swedish dance music has the same kind of lyrical erudition as its British counterpart. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but uh, this is a track uh, by a band called Familian. Um, the one thing to uh, to take note of is that it has a sensational video, okay. which can be viewed on YouTube. All right, we will look out for that. Uh, let's hear the tune. What was the name of the tune? The name of the tune, Steve, is Det Snuna i Min Skali by just Familian. I want to make that clear when I go into the record shop to ask for it. Uh, it's nice that we can start the show with some Bruce Springsteen, uh, or near the top of the show, start with Bruce Springsteen, and end with a couple of Swedish uh, dance music tunes. I like the fact that that uh, represents the eclectic uh, manner of the show. Sammy, you had a final thought? My parents were discussing this in my father's van yesterday. What would it be easier to beat in a fight, a cat or a dog? Think on. Well, thank you very much, and um, well, hopefully we'll have an answer uh, next week on the show. Uh, thank you uh, to Sammy, thank you to uh, Rufus, and of course Web Guru Vic Show, a little round of applause and Steve Wright stuff. Thanks to Crazy Woman uh, Jude as well, uh, she'll be back next week pressing the buttons, uh, as will I. Uh, is it Stuart McConey in his uh, Freak Zone next? Stuart McConey in his Freak Zone next, uh, if he likes uh, music that's eclectic and weird and whatnot. BBC Six Music. Uh, take the money and run from the Steve Miller Band 1976. I play that for my mother, who uh, informed me by uh, phone message earlier that she has completed a charity walk in aid of a hospice with a friend. Uh, well done to her. It took her 72 minutes, and that seems strangely appropriate. She, she'll take the money. Well, I was I was working on the hoof, and um, uh, so yes, well done to her and anyone else who's done any kind of charity fun run or whatnot, a bike ride of some kind today. Um, uh, don't get in touch. Uh, we haven't got time to talk about it. Because we are just crammed full of music, aren't we, on this show? And um, I'm always being told that I've got to keep this uh, opening link short because um, people get tired otherwise, people get bored, they want to move on, they want to go on to other stations. Uh, so I will just quickly introduce you to my uh, my mob, <laughs> as I uh, never call them. And uh, the far end there, we're welcoming him back from his uh, holiday excursion. It's uh, Harry, works in a bank. Yeah, round of applause Steve. Steve. Nice to nice yeah keep that in, uh, keep that clapping going for uh, professional northerner Sammy. Hello, Sammy. Hello. All right there, and um, he's, very, he's back as well. He's a very, very tiny man. And he's barely able to reach the microphone, but we're welcoming back uh, Dan. Hi. All right, good job. Well, that's all done. Obviously, Crazy Jude is here as well. Um, she's clinically insane. I'm not allowed to explain <laughs> or talk to people, and uh, not allowed to talk to you, the listeners, about exactly what has driven her over the edge, but uh, she... I don't know if you've been watching Heroes, but uh, in that show, um, there's a woman in there in a padded cell, isn't there? And uh, is that what it was like for you? Yeah. yeah. It's got, I always think the padded cell looks quite good fun. I always think you... Do you have a little bounce around in it? A bit dull. Is it a bit dull after all? There's not much going on, is there? Lost its sheep. All right, but you're back, and uh, you're here to press buttons for us so press one now as you play the cribs new single from the cribs that's our bovine public and uh, the cribs played in bristol for six music on thursday with Stephen lamatt Stephen lamatt wasn't playing an instrument i imagine he was just there uh, perhaps asking some questions and the like and there uh, people recorded it from six music and george lamb tomorrow night from 10 uh, will be uh, playing tracks from that uh, live recording if you are a cribs fan uh, it's the steve show bbc six music with me uh, steve merchant and as i was saying to my uh, cronies upstairs um and i think i mentioned it briefly last week as well um any decent radio show will worth its salt will ultimately put out